What's up, guys? What's up? Today we're gonna to talk about how we planned our dream wedding on a budget, saving thousands. Yes. So wedding planning is a it can be a very stressful thing. Mm -hmm. You know the whole bridezilla thing and like that. So there are ways to plan your wedding smartly, economically, and make things easy and stress free for you. And I feel we went that way with our wedding. So we're going to give we you some of the tips we things we had and th things we did with our wedding to kind of like make things simple. That way, give you guys some advice. All right, let's go. Let's go. So initially, we decided that we wanted to get married within a year of our engagement. So with that being said, we didn't have much planning time. But we honestly really didn't need that much time to plan because we quickly decided that we wanted a small, intimate wedding. Yeah. So with us, we have very large families, like very big families, and we also have a lot of church, very large church families. So mm -hmm. if we really wanted to, we could have a wedding with three, four hundred people because that's how many people really know. So our idea of our wedding was that we didn't want something that was this big giant affair we wanted something that was kind of small and intimate and cozy and kind of just just a few people so in order to get that to happen we kind of had to plan ahead about what we wanted to do as far as where we wanted to have our wedding and have an idea in our head okay well we know we want a small wedding so with the plan for a small wedding and in our wedding planning keep I, our, I, even in our head we want this to be itty bitty so that changes your venue, that changes where you want to have your wedding, where you have it at church, where you have it at a friend's house, or anywhere else. It depends on how many people you want to have at your wedding. Mm -hmm. So getting that first idea of the size of your wedding is like the first thing you need to do when planning your wedding. Because that will determine everything else you do. That's your main budget thing as far as everything will surround around how many people you have at your wedding. Yeah, and the more people you invite, the more expensive your wedding gets. So if you are trying to budget, the less the better. Yes. We didn't have a set number like 50, 60, or 100. We didn't have a set number. So with us, we were able to determine our guest list count by going over a checklist. Um, early on, Mark Anthony and I, we found a checklist that was circula circulating around online. And it was a checklist that basically had different questions that you needed to answer to determine if that person will be invited to the wedding. Mm -hmm. So they had questions like, have you spoken or seen this person within the last year? And then if it was a no, they were checked off the guest list. Um, what was something else they had? Um, is the person you're talking about inviting, is it a family friend? Is it your friend? Is it your parents' friend? Is it from, from school? Um, has this person met your spouse? Mm -hmm. If this is person or your spouse's name, those are the kind of things yeah. that would kind of check them off. The hey, you don't even know who I'm marrying. Well, I'm gonna invite you to my wedding. Like it's kind of like okay, you, we'll send you pictures. Thank you, mm -hmm. love you. Kind yeah. of like things like that are ways that you can kind of like reduce your overall guest count. Mm -hmm. And you say, you know, I'm not trying to be mean or whatever, but it's kind of like hey, you have to like get it down, get mm -hmm. that number down, to kind of help you out because weddings can get very expensive very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I like that we did that because everyone at the wedding, like, we knew them, we engaged with them, and like you said before, they knew myself and my husband. So it was really intimate. Yeah. Which is what we want. We want a, a, a small, intimate mm -hmm. wedding. So by going to that list, we knocked out hundreds and hundreds of people. Because <laughs> some, some set families you can only see for holidays and weddings. Yeah. So it's kind of like, well then, uh, not this wedding. This wedding, this is like, this is like the kind of people I see on a Sunday kind of wedding. That's the kind of wedding we want to have. And moving forward, I like the beach. The beach is one of my favorite places to go. And early on, Mark Anthony said he's always wanted a beach wedding. And yes, I was that's like, my dream was a beach wedding. That's perfect because I love the beach. You want a beach wedding. Yeah. Initially, I never had an idea made up in my mind about what my wedding would be. I never was the type to fantasize about my wedding day. So I didn't have any thing that I wanted 
for any ideas that I wanted to do before getting married. So everything was pretty much an open book. And see, I was the opposite. I had my wedding planned out. So we basically kind of had my way. <laughs> I mean, he's, so, yeah, he said did. it's his it, wedding. It was my wedding. It, it, was it was ultimately my dream wedding. I never knew I wanted. Because it was my dream wedding. Was no, it? I love the beach. You love. It was my beach wedding. We had my favorite cake. It was my favorite colors. We threw your favorite color in there. So it's all our favorite colors. All our dream wedding. Okay, our wedding. So, we decided we wanted to do a beach. So we was like, okay, cool. Um, some of you may know we do live in Virginia. Virginia has a couple beaches. Mm -hmm. They have Virginia Beach, and then a lot of people don't know, they do have like a small beach in Norfolk, Virginia. So those were the two places we immediately looked into, but I wasn't all the way sold because the beach is there, the water is not clear blue, like it is if you travel go and go to like out of the States. And then Virginia Beach is very crowded and dirty, and I wasn't trying to say I have a wedding there. Mm -hmm. So, um, we were kind of iffy about it, but we did call and get quotes and come to find out we would have to get permits mm -hmm. in order to have the wedding in Virginia Beach and Norfolk Beach. So, being that it was a lot of hassle, we was like, mm, let's kind of look around. Let's mm -hmm. not settle in. And plus, we, kinda, we, won't, we weren't really sold in on those beaches anyway. So then we figured since we want a beach wedding and we want the wedding to be intimate, we agreed that we can make our guest list smaller if we traveled out. Mm -hmm. And most beaches out of the state, further away, the water's more blue. Yeah. And the wedding and will be the wedding will be nice. Yeah. So um I just started searching beaches and we came across Myrtle Beach. Yes in North Carolina. I had never been to Myrtle Beach. Neither have he, I. Yeah. He hasn't been to Myrtle Beach. And um, after doing research, we found that it was a really popular location for weddings. Yeah. And then, so with that, we said, so, well, that would also help us get our guest size down because mm -hmm. you have to travel six hours to our wedding. Yeah. So there are a lot of people who like weddings who not necessarily want to travel six hours to go to a wedding. Yeah. So that got our guests just down a lot. It did. Yeah. <laughs> the fact that you had to travel six hours to a wedding, yeah, that changed that that mm -hmm. reduced the guest list. So that kind of helped us have a small word. Only people who really, really wanted to wanted see us get to married go was there. Came to see us get married. So yeah. that helped out a lot with our guest list. So once we decided on the location, the planning just went smooth sailing from there. But one thing that we did to help us because we it is Myrtle Beach, it's like six, six hours away. We can't really plan so much there. We said, well, okay, well, we found a company that does beach weddings. Mm -hmm. I forgot the name of it. it was beach wedding occasions or something. Yeah, that's exactly beach it. Wedding occasions. <laughs> wow. See? Yeah. So we contacted them and they literally helped us plan our wedding as far as in Myrtle Beach. So any type of permits they had to get, any setting up or whatever, all we had to do was basically show up. Mm -hmm. which made things a lot easier and simpler and yes with um the company we hired they did have a license to do weddings there so we still was required to have a permit like the other beach locations but we necessarily didn't have to get that permit because the person we hired had the permit they did beach weddings for a living so this was something they did full-time yeah they knew so, all the different the leg work to work and all the different things people that had to call and the papers that needed to be signed to get everything done properly mm -hmm. so we initially didn't think early on that we would need to hire somebody but once we started researching the location a lot of venues and companies came up and we figured it wouldn't be a bad idea since we were since we was six hours away it would have been really difficult to try to do everything on our own. It was like decoration, that, that, and then the company we used, they had a package that had everything in there. So they had decorations, they had set up, they had tear down, they had pictures, they had everything you could think of that you needed for a wedding. They had it together in one in a package there, there. So it kind of made things a lot easier for us. Mm -hmm. And then they also had add-ons, and then 
things that you could take off. So even though they had packages presented, we was able to customize our package depending on our wants and needs. Mm -hmm. So one thing I would always recommend anybody, you never want to cut cost on things that will like last a lifetime. Yeah. And when I say a lifetime, photos and videos, those are things you don't want to cut cost on because you don't want to look back 10 years later and be like, these are some cheesy photos, mm -hmm. the lighting is bad, or have a video where it only shows like a reception or the cake cutting and like, wait, I wished I recorded the ceremony, yeah. your first dance, the kiss. So when budgeting for your wedding, go ahead and spend money on those things, but you don't want to try to cut cost on those. Exactly. And then speaking of videos, we have our wedding video on there on our page. You can see our wedding, how beautiful it was, and our amazing video and our pictures and stuff because we didn't cut costs on it. So we had a nice <laughs> video you can watch yeah. down on our page. Yeah. So with that being said, we already knew we wanted to include those things in our wedding packages. And we went ahead and included the decor because again we didn't want to have to travel with all of those and plan it it just would have been really really stressful and i didn't want that stress on my mind and the hassle so we went ahead and allowed the company to do the decorations along with the photos and the videos mm -hmm. and we did have an option to do reception but we didn't want that because again we had a small wedding party when i had it decided we would have a dinner or like formal dinner mm -hmm. instead of a reception again we didn't have a lot of people and then we wanted to cut costs so when we did our budget we decided that doing a dinner instead of a party would save us lots of money thousands which yeah. it did so that's what we ended up doing. So with the um, wedding company we wanted to use, it was like, you're talking about $100 a head for a person. So weddings get really expensive if you're talking about receptions. So in our minds, okay, well, let's do it this way. Everyone's coming to our wedding's family. So I'm pretty sure they don't mind just going out to eat with us at a location. So we found a restaurant and you basically rented out their little, like, a section of the restaurant where they just basically put a bunch of tables and we all just went out to eat basically together. But they ended up actually giving us like a room. Was it a separate room? I thought it was just yeah. a room. Okay, I, could, I don't remember if it was actually a separate room or not. Yeah, it was like a wall. It was okay, so it was a separate room. And then basically we had a bunch of tables in there and then we basically went there and we ate dinner and we had cake that was, uh, but yeah, and then that was our reception. We didn't have a DJ or anything like that, or like a whole big reception party. We had we had our first dance at our actual wedding. Mm -hmm. During the our wedding ceremony, had our first dance incorporated into it because we just had to make, make things simpler, make things easier for us as far as having like the whole reception. In hindsight, I wish we did have like an actual like full big reception because I think that's a lot of fun. But at the same time, at that moment. The whole idea with us is that we, some people have weddings and they spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars on a wedding and then they get married and they have all this debt they have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And our main focus is that we want our wedding day to be a day of fun and excitement and joy and not have to have a lot of financial mm -hmm. issues after our wedding. And then we wanted to spend more money on the honeymoon yeah. and have spending money instead of, you know, spending it mm -hmm. on the wedding. Like, I know one person um, who got married, and they spent, like, $20,000 on their wedding, but they didn't have a place, a house to stay in. So, they basically could have took that $20,000 and used that to buy them just a house mm -hmm. rather than staying in an apartment that they didn't even want to be in because they wanted to have this amazing, gigantic wedding instead of saying, you know what, I'm going to take that money for a house or an apartment or mm -hmm. a new bed spread or a new bed or whatever <laughs> or furniture and clothes and there are a lot of other things you can spend money on rather than your wedding day yes the wedding day is amazing it's amazing but you don't have to you have to live your life after that mm -hmm. and you take all your money and throw it to that one day 
what are you gonna have after? And if you have it like that, cool. You have it like that. We didn't have it like that. So yeah, I didn't want to have to spend all that yeah. money, and I ain't got no place, a house. You know. No. So yeah. No. You gotta just think. Of, think. Be smart. And I go back to the planning aspect of what's important to you. And to us, living well after our wedding was more important than having this amazing, fancy, mm -hmm. extravagant wedding. We also hired somebody for our wedding cake. I didn't necessarily want to have a cheap wedding cake, but I just basically did my research online and we decided on one company, but didn't actually taste the cake mm -hmm. beforehand. Because tastings are expensive and that's extra, well, that's I don't, extra money. Well, I don't, I don't even think it was extra money. We it just, was, it was. We, we would have to travel to Myrtle Beach. Well, yeah, we would have it. to travel, but, but I don't it think. it also was money for a tasting. We decided not to do a tasting. They had the option for it. I don't remember that. Because it was the, the wedding cake company we used was the one recommended by um, Peach Occasions. Okay. Well, I didn't. I didn't know. Well, he says it was. I don't remember it being a charge to taste. Mm -hmm. But it was a charge. from what I recall, we just never drove down there to taste the cake. We just went with somebody on a based off of a recommendation. But that kind of backfired on us because our wedding horrible. cake was it not was good. Disgusting. I mean, it looked nice. It was pretty, but it looked it looked nice, but it would taste horrible. It, it it didn't taste good. So if you have the option to taste your wedding cake, even if it's going to cost you a little bit of money, go ahead and do it. If, if that matters if, to you. Yeah, if that if matters, matters to you. you. It didn't really matter that much, so we didn't put a lot of detail on it. We had a red velvet well, cake. Well, if I knew it was going to be nasty, I would have. I didn't know. It was dry. It was disgusting. It was, like, it was, it was, it was a very bad cake. Red velvet is hard to get right, so that was probably the issue we had, and they did not get it right. It was disgusting. Yeah. But you live and you learn. Um, but I did cut costs, y'all. I told you, we saved thousands on this wedding. So I went in with my mom and my sister to David's Bridal to look for a wedding dress. But prior to looking for wedding dresses in person, I did a couple research online, and I already decided... I wanted a wedding dress that shaped my figure, the whole mermaid look, and then have the trill at the end. So that was really simple because most wedding shops already have that style. So I was researching online. I found a couple styles online. I'm not going to tell you where just yet, but it was <laughs> this website where everybody orders from. So I told my mom, I was like, oh my gosh, mommy, I found the perfect style I want to wear, but I happened to find it on this website, but I'm not going to order a dress from there because, you know, that's cheap, but I want a dress just like this on the website. It's really nice. So we go into David's Bridal and we look at a couple of dresses and then after about like the third or fourth dress, I didn't even try them on. I'm just like skimming through the dresses, I see the dress that I, the exact same dress and style that I want to wear. Oh my gosh, mommy, this is the dress I saw online. So then I look at the price tag, it's like thousands of dollars. And I'm like, mommy, look at this dress. The same dress I said I wanted is the same online, it's right here. It's thousands of dollars in person and online, I think it was, I'm gonna have to go look, look it back up. But I think it was like, $300 online. <laughs> $300. I think that was, or it could have been almost two, but it was in the twos or threes. And I was like, ain't no way in the world I'm going to pass up a $200, $300 dress. And it's the same exact one at David's Bridal. In my mind, I'm like, David Bridal it's the up orders for the price. their dresses from other vendors, different websites, yeah. and takes it to the store to sell so it. Because it's the same dress. Every dress company, every dress place, it, it, it's a wedding. They charge you more because it's your wedding. And you know, oh my gosh, mommy, it's my wedding. I have to have an amazing dress. They, they charge you an exorbitant amount of money for wedding dresses. Venues do that well. When you're looking for venues, don't tell them you're planning a wedding. The moment you tell them you're planning your wedding, the, the prices price are going to go up. It is. That's how, what, it's the whole wedding thing. So anything, whether it's a, it's a caterer, photographer, anything like that, don't mention it's a wedding ahead of time. Because if you mention the wedding, the price goes up. Get their prices, their normal prices before you tell them it's a wedding. They're going to change it either way once they find they out. They are, but you have an idea of how much they're going to upcharge you. And that's how dresses mm -hmm. are. They upcharge you so much. For a dress because it's a wedding dress. So, um, I told my mom, I was like, <clears throat> if I 
if you're fine with it, I want to go ahead and order that dress online. Have it come in, try it on, check the fit. If it doesn't work out, we could always take it back and, you know, come back in the store to get a dress. So, um, we decided, alright, let's just go ahead and still try on the dress. So, I tried on the dress inside David's Bridals. I took pet. I took pictures, I told the lady, I was like, this is the dress I want. She gave us quotes, she told us how much the down payment would be. We even took pictures with the sign. I said yes to the dress. <laughs> so happy. So then I went home later on that day, a couple of days, I ended up ordering the dress. And the website was Amazon. Amazon's amazing. Amazon.com. A to Z. Everything. So I was like, oh my God, I love Amazon. Okay. So we ended up ordering the dress, so I'm a small, petite person, so of course I did get small, I can't remember the sizes, but I tried on the dress, it was a little big, a little gappy, but that wasn't an issue because my mom always had a person that she went to to get garments and dresses taken in, so my mom was like, no issue, we can take this to my friend. And she's a professional, like she does it for a living. Yeah. Takes in dresses, takes in garments and clothes. So we ended up getting the dress and she sized me. She was like, oh my gosh, it's a beautiful dress. Where'd you get it from? She sized it to my size, took it in. And mind you, the person that my mom goes to, she does, she's not gonna like upcharge you just because it's a wedding. And my mom's been going to her for years. Yeah. So it was no more than I think like $50 just to take in my wedding dress. See? So, I saved like Bunch of money thousands of dollars. It was beautiful. I mean, I yes. love that dress. And since we were having a beach wedding, I decided I didn't want to wear shoes. I wanted to wear foot jewelry. So, I was able to get my foot jewelry, my earrings, my little, what's this called? My headband, the diamond headband, all from Amazon as well for yep. under $100 total for all of those things. And I did try on that belt. I had a belt with the diamonds because I didn't want the dress to just be plain white. I wanted to add some accessories. So in the store, we tried on the belt. And that belt, I kid you not, in the store was like $800. That belt <laughs> of charms alone. And I, sure enough, Went home and went on Amazon and found the exact same belt <laughs> for like, I think, what, $10, $15. Tell you, they be, they be charging you so much. Like, I, and they had that belt for sale for hundreds in David Abrardo. Yeah. I saved so much money and, <clears throat> oh my God, I mean, everything was perfect. You cannot tell me I was a million bucks yes, walking down that aisle. Yes, you beautiful, You beautiful, beautiful. I mean, beautiful. I got everything for cheap, but it didn't look cheap. So, if you could cut costs on accessories... Because as a girl, if you, you know when things look good. Like, mm -hmm. you can't tell if you have on cheap shoes, clothes. Yeah. You just have to dress it up. So, and another, check another way out. that, so with her attire was very easy and cheap. Mm -hmm. So was my attire because it was we're a on beach. a beach. Yeah. So we had basically white shirts and khaki, and, uh, khaki pants mm -hmm. and Amazon, hey. This is the outfit. Go to Amazon. Amazon. Everyone order the same thing. Yeah. We don't need to go to Jester Men and get tuxes and all that stuff because, yes, you want to look nice on your wedding day. But again, you don't want to spend an arm and a leg for one day. So, mm -hmm. yes, having a tux is nice and having this nice tailored suit is nice. But if you don't, it's not necessary. If you feel like, you know what, I'm gonna, that's an easy way to save money. Just everyone, hey, wear something nice. Everyone, everyone, every guy has a black pants, a black shirt white shirt <clears throat> mm -hmm. put on that it doesn't have to be okay everything everyone has to get rich tucks no you don't necessarily have to have that if you want to you want to spend money on tucks that you can but yeah. you don't have to it's, it's not a requirement to do that so and i guess it's an easy way to save money it depends on the style of your wedding if you want to save a lot of money you could decide to do the casual look like we did but it was still kind of fancy because it yeah. was a beach but I know some even people... If you, if you, even if you're doing a fancy wedding, you don't have to yeah. have tailored suits to do that. Mm -hmm. Like if you decide on a backyard wedding, I've seen lots of beautiful backyard weddings. Oh, yeah. Those are beautiful and, and you can still be casual and dressy at the same time. Yeah. There are hundreds of ways to save money on your wedding because, yes, it is your special day. 
but you don't want your special day to cause issues in your marriage. Mm-hmm. One of the main issues people have in marriage is communication and communication about finances. So a wedding and planning a wedding and the money involved in planning a wedding mm-hmm. can be a lot of stress on a new marriage. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to be so busy trying to make your wedding beautiful and amazing and spending all this money on it that at the end of your wedding day, you're then stressing about how much money you spent. And you're like, oh, I wish that we hadn't done this. I wish we hadn't spent money on that. No, it's almost better to go cheaper and then do a more expensive wedding later when you have it going than to spend all your money on a wedding and then things don't work out or whatever. It's don't, no. Save money, make things simple. That's how you used to see. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Yes. This is the kind of things that we wish that we had someone had told us about. We were smart about our wedding, but at the same time, yeah, we, we figured we, it out. We could have been very stupid about our wedding. So we want this video to help you guys out mm-hmm. to plan your weddings and to be smart about your wedding planning. Mm-hmm. You want to see how amazing our wedding is? We have our wedding video on our on our page. Yep. We'll and link you'll it see, down below. You'll see. It was that beautiful. wedding was beautiful and amazing. We looked it. nice and we didn't have to spend a lot on it. So neither do you. Comment. Like. Subscribe. And we'll talk to you guys later.